Welcome to an hour of HealthMade Radio. HealthMade is a community for natural health seekers who will educate people about common health conditions and share extensive research on the most effective natural health treatments and promote legislation that protects our health freedoms. Our core concept belief is an innate intelligence and healing power of the body, and if properly supported spiritually, emotionally, and nutritionally, it can find its way back to health. Health Made Radio will bring information from integrative health experts throughout the world. Check us out at healthmade.co. Health is what you make it. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld, and I'll be your host. Today's guest is Dr. William Pavlik. Well, Dr. William Pavlik is a holistic doctor near Baltimore and Maryland. Previous academic positions at St. Johns uh, Hopkins, uh, or at Johns Hopkins and University of Maryland. Uh, his training includes acupuncture, homeopathy, hypnosis, and body work. He's considered the foremost authority on the use of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, or PEMF, in North America. He is very interested in holistic pain management. He's interested in new solutions to stubborn, chronic, frustrating health problems. He wants to try to resolve these cause of problems and not to simply put a Band-Aid on it. Most conventional treatments for pain rely on numbing and dumbing that simply make the perception of pain better but don't heal the cause. On the Dr. Oz show, they both agreed that pain management should be focused on healing the cause. After 25 years of seeking the risk and side effects of traditional approaches and studying various healing approaches, he discovered the PEMFs uh, provide the most benefit and allow safe, non-toxic, self-directed, and self-controlled uh, at-home pain management. He's worked with magnetic field therapies for 25 years, established an authority website, www. DrPavlik.com. So www.dr.pavlik.com. He has just completed a comprehensive book on healing with magnetic fields called Power Tools for Health. This book describes that what magnetic fields are, over 25 actions on magnetic fields in the body, how they work for over 50 health conditions, how they get one, and how to use it. This is supported by over 500 scientific references, and it's the most authoritative yet readable book on the topic available to date. To help promote this healing concept, he has well over 50 radio podcasts, magazine, and TV interviews combined. He's also been a co-host of a two-hour holistic health radio show in Baltimore for 10 years, previously VP of North American Academy of Magnetic Therapy. Uh, Dr. Pavlik, you have a long and illustrious career Indeed. So it's really an honor to have you on the show today. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for the introduction. I look forward to chatting with you. So I'm, I'm curious. You, you work in the traditional field you know, for all that time. And uh, in the introduction, we talked about you know, dealing with, with pain and, and how the medical profession currently deals with pain. I mean, what, what made you wake up? I mean, what, what t- made you take that step into this field? Um, well, years ago, probably back in the 80s, I had a couple of patients. I was with a group of doctors, a group of family physicians in New Jersey. I was the medical director of the group, but we all shared coverage for the hospital. And uh, over a period of about a week to two weeks, we had several patients admitted to the hospital with a gastric bleeding. And one of them almost died. So, you know, I, th- I thought to myself, this is crazy medicine, that we're, we're killing people, potentially killing people to solve their pain problems. They wouldn't have died from their pain, but they were going to die from our treatment. So I said, this is, this is a, a definition of insanity. So I said, I got to do something different. I, I, you know, when I looked around at my peers, my consultants, my specialists, my partners, I said, you know, we, we, everybody's doing the same thing. So there has to be a different solution. And as a result, I started studying uh, acupuncture. I went to a UCLA program for uh, physicians for acupuncture. And, um, Okay, lo and behold, a new solution for pain management. Unfortunately, at that time in 1990, um, people didn't know what acupuncture was. So it was, it was uh, like, get, don't come near me with those needles. People obviously didn't want needles. They didn't understand acupuncture, which made it even worse. Uh, so I started looking at other ways of doing acupuncture other than using needles. And discovered that in, the, uh, in Eastern countries, in Asian countries in particular, 
they had been using magnets on acupuncture points. So I started working with magnets on acupuncture points. And then as I did started working with magnets extensively, I began to discover that magnets had a lot of other actions in the tissues. They did healing work in the tissue that um, uh, acupuncture didn't do. So an acupuncture needle put in an acupuncture point stimulates an acupuncture meridian, which is a, a basically a flow system in the acupuncture um, among the 12 acupuncture meridians approximately. Um, then that causes indirect effects in the body, which then enhances health. But it doesn't do direct tissue healing. So as a doctor, as a medical doctor, I was interested in tissue healing. So if you break a bone, you want to heal that bone faster. If you have a cut, you want to cut it. You want to heal it faster. If you have a strain or a sprain or tear a muscle, you want to heal it faster. And I discovered that magnets did that. So that's sort of like the background behind how I got involved in magnetic field therapies. So uh, in regards to magnetic therapy, I mean, how, how, does, how does it really work? I mean, how, how can uh, – you're, you're, yeah, how, how does it work? Well, again, my own uh, knowledge in terms of what, what magnetic fields do uh, evolved as well. So I started working with magnets, getting uh, obviously practical experience with them, but I didn't know how it worked. So I started studying more and more about how magnetic therapy actually works, magnetic fields work in the body, and ended up writing a book um, shared with a doctor, an MD-PhD from the Czech Republic called Magnetic Fields in Eastern Europe, a review of 30 years of, heat, of, of uh, research. So that book kind of really opened my eyes in terms of what uh, people had actually studied for years already in Europe before we actually became aware of it in, in the West. Uh, so magnetic fields work in a lot of different ways. The primary actions of magnetic fields um, have to do with the way the magnetic field passes through the body. Now there's a difference between pulsed electromagnetic fields or PEMFs versus what we call EMFs, which is the environment, like uh, Wi-Fi and microwaves and cell phones and um, routers and all, all those kinds of magnetic fields that are out there that we consider to be bad or potentially bad. So those are broadcasted magnetic fields or broadcasted fields essentially into the environment, just like radio waves and television waves and radar and so on. PEMFs are created by current flowing through wires that's pulsed by an electronic device that controls the pulse rate of that current and the intensity of that current. And there's a rule of physics called the uh, right-hand rule that a current flowing through a wire produces a magnetic field. Well, that magnetic field then goes into the body. And if you have a strong enough magnetic field, it goes all the way through the body. And as it passes through it induces charge production in the tissues, interacting with electrolytes and nerves and you know, other uh, ma material in the body that has energy to it, has charge to it, positive and negative ions and so on. So magnetic fields interact with that to produce more energy, even more energy than they were producing on their own. And that increase in energy is what then contributes to all the different actions of magnetic fields. So in, in reality, I mean... Because we, we don't recognize that. We kind of look upon us as physical beings. You know, everything is tissue. Uh, and then, you know, we, we, we eat. We get the nutrients from that. But we don't recognize the, the electrical component. I mean, it's, it's every cell is, is electrical. And without electricity, obviously, there would be nothing that takes place in the body. That's right. Everything has to talk to it, itself. You know, the whole system is talking. Out of 100 trillion cells in our bodies, that's approximately what we have, 100 trillion cells in a human body, every cell has about 2,000 biochemical processes going on per second. That's a huge amount of activity, and all of that's coordinated. All of that's controlled. And a change in one aspect of it causes a reaction from another aspect of it, always trying to rebalance itself you know, for the total mission of being <laughs> basically alive. So yes, yeah, so the mag magnetic fields interact with all those processes, and it's all electrochemically, electromagnetically controlled. Sodium. So is, Sorry. Uh, the, so yeah, okay, go ahead. So uh, you have like the sodium potassium pump, for instance. I mean, that, that's 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 such a crucial aspect in regards to uh, your cellular function. If that's not operating appropriately, then obviously that cell can't function correctly, and and that is. 
having then appropriate electrical charge, you know, between kind of that membrane, cellular membrane. It's electrical charge and magnetic charge. So where there's electrical, there's magnetic, and that's why we call it electromagnetic. That's the second force of the universe. It's elect the electromagnetic force. So everything in the body is coordinated through electromagnetic interactions. And magnetic fields basically enhance that process. They basically rebalance the process. So when it's gotten stuck, when a cell has gotten stuck, as you said, the sodium-potassium pump has gotten dysregulated. A charge builds up on the outside of a cell. So that's an injured cell. So if you open those membranes, you start to in, or increase those channel functions in the cell membranes, then all of a sudden the cell restores itself, unless it's at a point where it can't restore anymore. It's beyond, beyond ability to do that. So you want to intervene as soon as possible. When things become out of balance, you want to intervene as soon as possible because magnetic therapy doesn't raise the dead. No, exactly. So if, is there such a thing then as a uh, deficiency, electromagnetic deficiency in cells? Oh, that's a good question. But I think magne electromagnetic deficiency is basically, well, even, even dead cells uh, have molecules, have sodium, potassium, all, all, all the minerals of the body. And they're not really, those minerals are not dead. They still have a magnetic field. It's just the interaction of all of that that causes life. And so uh, magnetic fields basically just stimulate all of that to, to happen better. And so uh, in, in regards to, because you have then uh, the electromagnetic field that we are bathed in uh, through Earth. And in, I mean, th does that kind of give, I mean, what impact does that have? And, and how is that different from uh, external devices that, that we would use? So the magnetic field of the Earth is basically a static magnetic field. It's just permanently there. It's not moving, typically. Uh, we don't recognize it as moving. There's some variability to it, but essentially it's like a fridge magnet. The whole Earth is like one great big static magnet. Now, we, are, we grow in that. We are raised in that. Our DNA is, is uh, cultured by that, processed by that. So that is in the background. We can, we, it's indispensable to life. And then whatever actions we have that are active, that are much more active, which is what pulse magnetic fields are, they're much more active. They enhance other functions in the body, but those functions still depend on the Earth's magnetic field as a background. And we know that magnetic field therapy in, in space, research has been done where you create what are called null magnetic fields, where there's no magnetic field. It's, it's a different process, and tissues don't function as well in a null magnetic field. Because, again, we grew our biology is how many millions of years old that dependent on the Earth's magnetic field. So we need the background field of the Earth, but we need more than that. And that even, you know, we have a saw in medicine, we call it. Uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. Right? If you're not active, if, you don't, if you're not in motion, then you die. You lose function. Yeah. And magnetic fields so almost, accelerate, basically accelerate that process. And so it's almost like, you know, the, the I mean, being bathed in that electromagnetic field, it's almost like it's kind of a, a battery to kind of keep us going. And then sometimes, you know, as we were talking about the deficiency, you know, sometimes, you know, the, uh, we need to kind of push that, that charge in the body with external devices to, you know, as the tissue is, is getting unresponsive or not active enough, that we can use external devices to uh, to kind of bring more life or you know light or energy kind of in that tissue. Exactly, the FDA has actually approved PMF therapy for healing what are called non-union fractures. So fractures that won't heal. Normally, a fracture will uh, become usable at about our extremity will become usable in about 12 weeks after putting a cast on it because the body initiates a healing response to heal that fracture and the damage of the tissue around that fracture. But sometimes, a certain percentage of fractures, um, several, you know, one or two percent, depending on the bones, uh, don't heal. They become what are called non-unions. Well, the FDA approved magnetic field therapy to stimulate these fractures, these non-union fractures, to heal themselves. And typically, once you start doing magnetic field therapy for one of these stalled healing fractures, all of a sudden, the fracture wakes up. The body wakes up and begins the healing process. So why did the body stall? 
why did the healing process stall in that fracture? Okay, and normal people would would progress to healing it, and at varying rates. So obviously, a five year old is going to heal a fracture much faster than a seventy five year old. But basically, the body has uh, its own natural mechanisms to begin to heal the process, or to heal the fractures. And so, magnetic field therapy then stimulates beyond what the body was able to do. It got stalled because something quit in the body. Something wasn't working, whether it was nutrition, whether it was um, just a poor health state in general, whether they'd been poisoned by, say, chemotherapy or uh, radiation therapy, etc. Something caused the process to stall, and magnetic field therapy reinitiated, reinvigorated the healing process. That's fascinating, the, the power of that. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Health Made Radio. I'm here with Dr. William Pavlik. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlson. I'm here with Dr. William Pavlik. He is the author of the book Power Tools for Health Using PEMF, Pulse Electromagnetic Field, to Heal the Body and Regenerate Tissue. So, uh, one of the things that I read you know, many, many years ago, I, you, you're probably familiar with, with Robert Beck's uh, work in regards to using then uh, electromagnetic uh, fields or electric stimulation to regrow uh, tails of, uh, I believe it's little salamanders, Sal- correct? Salamanders, yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it, it's actually to, to show the, the effect, the, the regenerative effect of using electrical stimulation. So uh, it's, it's really, really fascinating how you can just use that the stimulation to really uh, activate a physical function uh, that is that is slow or like you said it is not regenerative enough. That had stalled, and Dr. Becker um, basically showed us that electrical field stimulation can act, actuate tissue function and healing. There's a difference between electrical stimulation, which is like tens machines, or putting an electrode on the tissue, which is basically delivering electricity to the tissue. So that's called capacitatively coupled electrical stimulation. The difference between that and magnetic field therapy is that magnetic field therapy does does what's called inductively coupled electrical stimulation. So it's inducing charge production of the body using a magnetic field instead of directly introducing an electrical field. Now, electrical fields to the tissues are basically a form of electrocution. It's controlled electrocution. So that's damaging, and it has a limitation that it doesn't go deep into the body. So if you want to de- uh, treat deep in the body, including a nonunion fracture, you're going to have to do surgery to implant an electrode into the tissue to stimulate the tissue electrically. Magnetic field therapy is non-invasive and very, very, very safe. So uh, you can go expand a little bit more because people a lot of times get confused then with the with the electrical and the magnetic aspect. I mean. Uh, do they always work together? I mean, does one take uh, come uh, just as a result of the other? I mean, how how do they work together? Um, well, magnetic fields work uh, with charge. So en- wherever there is a current flowing, wherever there's charge, where there is a, a positive or negative charge to a molecule, to an ion, that uh, – charge can interact with the magnetic field due to something called Maxwell's equations. And the uh, Faraday's law also says that a magnetic field, a a moving magnetic field passing through uh, charged areas of the body, like neurons, like uh, electrolytes in tissues, the cells, the electrolytes are fluids between the cells, then magnetic fields interact with that to produce even more charge. They activate more charge in the tissue. And it's that activation of the charge that causes then more work to be done by the body, like improving circulation, like enhancing healing, like uh, stimulating stem cells, like um, decreasing inflammation. And the list is is long. In the book, we talk about 25 different actions of magnetic fields in the body. So by that interaction of electro and magnetic, then you get increased charge production by itself in the tissues. The tissues have more energy than to do their work. For example, one of the things magnetic fields do, by virtue of this interaction between electrical and magnetic in the tissues, they increase ATP by anywhere between 100 to 600 percent. So ATP production by itself stimulates the ability of cells to do more work. 
And as we get older, we lose ATP. When we are injured, the body needs even more ATP to get over the injury. And sometimes that ATP that the body can produce is not enough, and magnetic therapy induces the increased production of ATP. And, and ATP is, I mean, that is like the energy currency of the cell. You know, so if, you know, it's, it's just like a bank account. You know, the, the more money you have in the account, the more things you can do. And when you don't have any money, then nothing happens in, in that cell. So if you have, you know, the, the, uh, the PEMF or, or using these, this kind of external techniques, you are then able to then increase, you know, the amount of money in your energy bank account and then those cells can then thrive better, heal better, detoxify better, uh, and uh, and tissue are, is just healthier. It's just it's healthier, exactly. And no matter what tissue it is, no matter the age of the person, and it doesn't matter whether you're a human um, or an animal or a, even a plant, magnetic field therapy, in, magnetic fields increase the energy in all of those tissues, all of those organisms, if you will. Let's take a quick break. You're listening to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlsfeld. I'm here with Dr. William Pavlik. He is the author of Power Tools for Health. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlsfeld. I'm here with Dr. William Pavlik. Uh, you can find more information about everything that he does on his web- website, www.dr.com. P-A-W-L-U-K, public.com. So in, in regards then to, you, you talked about regeneration of bones you know, and, and you know, tissue that is not healing well. So obviously we're dealing with a, a epidemic where people are on pain medications. And this was one of the reasons why you, you, you started in this therapy. And also people then, you know, that's probably one of the things that people are dying from most in regards to medication is, is pain medication, you know, like taking too much you know, aspirin and, and you have, you know, bleeding, people are bleeding to death, like, like you mentioned. So it is, is really powerful in that area for any kind of regeneration. But then as we're then discussing that it has then an effect then on a even deeper level, you know, on the cellular level to really increase that mitochondria and also then normalizing then the electrical charge within the cell. Uh, so what breath, I mean, you're, you're, in your book, you have a huge amount of different health conditions that, that can benefit. So can you, can you expand a little bit on you know, how they will help there? I mean, what, what type of health conditions should people then really start thinking about, you know, I, I should use PMF? Well, most people tend to... Um think about PMF therapy primarily because of pain, pain management. And the good thing about magnetic field therapy is it's not like putting a Band-Aid on something. It's not like taking an ibuprofen or, let's say, a Tylenol that simply helps you with your pain or an opioid, which simply helps you with your pain. But it doesn't do healing work. So my interest in magnetic field therapy and my passion for magnetic field therapy comes from the fact that you can very often heal the cause of the pain. So you can improve pain by itself very quickly and then you can improve function of the tissue involved with the pain as well as that as the pain improves but at the at the same time you're actually healing the tissue so if you're putting a band-aid on it the pain will come back if you haven't healed the tissue the pain will come back so then the use of the magnetic field therapy heals the tissue or heals the cause often associated with inflammation often associated with injuries and because of that healing then the pain goes away can go away permanently it doesn't in everybody, but that's the goal. Now, because of the basic functions of magnetic fields and increasing energy in the tissue, it doesn't matter what the disease is. In our society, we tend to think of diabetes, you use insulin. If it's heart disease, you use you know, statins or whatever, or vascular disease. So we have like a one problem, one solution kind of paradigm that we work with, and that's certainly the way the FDA works. Magnetic field therapy crosses all these barriers. Because there are 25 actions of magnetic fields in the body, the body chooses what it's going to do with the stimulation. And therefore, it's going to use all, that stimulation to do everything it needs to do to restore its balance. So it doesn't matter what the tissue is. So it can help with inflammation. It can help with infections. It can help with, um, again, trauma, tissue damage. It can heat damage, cold damage, uh, concussions, um, diabetes, 
magnetic field therapy is critical for diabetes because what it does is restore circulation. And one of the challenges of diabetes is the compromise that it makes to both mac macrovascular and microvascular structures of the body, heart disease, the brain. So all of these things become restored and rebalanced and repaired to the extent that the body can repair it. So it, let, let's kind of go then to something like, you know, like diabetes, for instance. I mean, here, here you're thinking of, you know, that this is a, an insulin deficiency that the body's not able to transport you know, sugar into the, the cell appropriately. I mean, so w will it work even for something like that? So the question is whether the magnetic fields are, are going to help with the metabolic part of d diabetes. Um, and there's some evidence to indicate that you can actually stimulate pancreatic function. You can actually produce more insulin. You can stimulate uh, liver function. You can improve liver function so that the body will metabolize better. Uh, it'll produce more uh, f fats. Yes, one, of the, one of the purposes of insulin is to actually store the sugar that we have in our blood into, into fatty stores primarily. But we use it for energy stores as well, but we also load it into fatty tissue. So magnetic fields can help with that. But the, the biggest improvement and the biggest benefit with magnetic field therapy comes with actually uh, dealing with the compromises caused by the hyperinsulinemia and also the hyperglycemia for, with the diabetes. So... Uh so by, I mean, because obviously if you're dealing with uh, like an autoimmune condition or you know, when you had type 1 diabetes, you, know, you, you don't have the, the, the function of the uh, normal you know, beta cells. You know, they're, they're actually kind of dying off. So in, in those situations, I, I would assume that, it, it, I mean, it would still benefit, but you wouldn't really regenerate the, the, the pancreas at that time. But, but just the function, like you're saying, you know, you're, you're able to activate the metabolic function of the body, and uh, and there you can then speed up the, the transport of sugar into the cell and also speed up the, the utilization of, of sugar within the cell and then also work on the, uh, the liver that is then the, the storage unit, so to say, of, of sugar. So, you know, by increasing, by using this kind of a tool, you're then able to, you know, help the body as a whole and, and then have a better outcome. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the aspects that we talk about with hyperglycemia is the production of advanced glycation end products. In other words, that the sugar itself produces these glycation metabolic products, and the AGEs attach themselves to soft tissues, including the brain, including blood vessels, including skin, virtually all the tissues of the body. And what magnetic fields do then is they don't prevent the AGEs from happening. That I'm aware of. But what they do, because the AGEs cause inflammation. So then the magnetic fields are really, really critical to helping to decrease the inflammation. So when you mentioned autoimmune disease, magnetic field therapy doesn't turn off the autoimmune process. But like steroids or like all the other medications and other treatments that we do for uh, autoimmune disease, we're just tuning down the inflammation. And because you can do whole body treatment with magnetic field therapy, you're basically treating the whole body's inflammatory process. And, and in regards to inflammation, I mean, that, I mean, the majority of disease is due to inflammation. So if you have then a, something that can then help to bring that down, you can then improve pretty much any kind of health condition. You're right. I mean, even aging by itself, if you're doing magnetic field therapy on a regular basis, you're balancing tissues and cells constantly. Uh, to help to decrease the amount of inflammation. So inflammation may not be the cause of the problem. The inflammation is there no matter what, whatever the pro injury is. So, for example, you have an injury, you've got a cut. Inflammation is a necessary part of healing the cut, but you do want it to turn off. When the healing is done, you want it to turn off. And aging is an, a process of constant and chronic inflammation that doesn't get turned off. And the more chronic inflammation you have, the faster you age. So magnetic field therapy can help e even with aging if you're doing magnetic field therapy on a regular basis. You can't just sort of do it once a week and get a significant amount of anti-aging from it. And, and you're, you're kind of going back to the anti-aging aspect. You're talking about the glycation, you know, the AGEs, uh, and that is what's kind of make tissue or, or proteins, they kind of stick together, which will then interfere with normal healthy function 
So it's like exactly. you are then caramelizing tissue uh, that is just getting older because of that. So if you're then able then to break that apart and use, you know, like, like the PEMS to break that apart, you're then able to normalize the healthier tissue circulation, you know, cells becomes more active, more vibrant, and, uh, and you know, you, you are less likely to age faster. And AGEs not only cause vascular disease, they also cause dementia. The AGEs are also causing heart disease, uh, and they also cause arthritis. So as these AGEs attach into synovial tissues and around the joints themselves, they thicken the joints, make the joints arthritic and stiff. And so, again, magnetic field therapy can help to prevent that from happening as well. Yeah, exactly. Let's take a quick break. You're listening to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Dr. William Pollock. He is the author of Power Tools for Health. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Dr. William Pollock. He's the author of Power Tools for Health. So one of the issues we're dealing with, we're talking about the cardiovascular and, and the importance. You know, obviously, if, if it reduces inflammation, it will then reduce inflammation along the the blood vessels, which, you know, when the blood vessels are inflamed, they are more likely to become atherosclerotic, you know, where you have them build up of things along the blood vessels, which then will promote, you know, cardiovascular disease and put you at risk for heart attacks and those kind of things. Uh, but then also in regards to then uh, cancer, I mean, that that's always something that is, because uh, I do a lot of integrative oncology, uh, you are using these devices, these PEMF units, you know, for cancer as well, right? And, and how, how can it help there? Well, cancer is also, to some extent, uh, an inflammatory process. First of all, once you start to get cancer, the body starts to fight it, and so you develop inflammation as a result of that as, as well. But PMF therapy, because it tries to rebalance tissues and cells, uh, one of the things it does is it increases apoptosis. So apoptosis is the natural turnover of cells. So cells also have their own life cycles as they age. Well, if you have too, much, too many cells in the body that are decrepit, that are broken down and not passing on, not being uh, recycled, then that can often lead to the situation of uh, cancer uh, and creating an environment for cancer to grow. So cancer stem cells will thrive in that kind of environment. Well, PEMFs then, by, de by increasing apoptosis and improving autophagy, um, recycle cells better, faster, so that ha dying cells die, die off better and the tissues get cleaned up and that prevents the cancer. But cancer cells also have a huge number of metabolic mechanisms that they use to defend themselves and to procreate, to, to build the cancer. So magnetic fields interfere with uh, cancer cells in a lot of ways. They decrease proliferation of cancer cells. They help the body's immune system to fight the cancer cells. Cancers also build fibrin shells around them. And magnetic field therapy has fibrinolytic actions, not only in the, in the blood vessels, but also in the tissues themselves. And we talk about AGEs and decreasing that stiffness. So PEMFs have been found to actually help uh, people with all stages of cancer. And I do uh, work quite a bit with people with cancer with magnetic fields. And you need to have strong enough magnetic fields to work with the cancer process. Because one of the things we've discovered is that in order to decrease inflammation, you need about 15 Gauss at the target tissue to uh, have uh, optimal levels of anti-inflammatory action. And magnetic fields drop off very rapidly like sunlight and heat and cold and, and radiation does. So you have to account for the drop off in the, in, from, the mag from the source of the magnetic field deep into the body. So if you're treating across a brain, for example, you need about 4,000 Gauss to treat from one side of the brain to the other to deliver the 15 Gauss at the other end of the brain or the other side of the brain. So you have to have the right intensity, but inflammation is a big part of this. But it's not just that. There, there are other aspects of cancer function that uh, are uh, improved or decreased. Cancer progression is decreased with magnetic fields. And I have a number of patients who've lived by five or seven years uh, with stage four cancers using magnetic field therapies and uh, uh, supplemental therapies and nutritional therapies and so on. So, and, and if I'm hearing you right, it, it's almost you're talking about the fibrinolytic, you know, if, and uh, healthy tissue, like you're saying, has a certain charge around itself, and then cancer, uh, it's like it has a, a weaker charge. 
So it's almost like when you're applying then this this charge around the cancer, it's like you're you're punching holes, so to say, and you know with the cancer. Is, is, is that is that a, a right expression? That's one way that it happens. There, there are lots of different mechanisms, and in my book I have um, a summary of the biologic processes that have been studied. Some of the biologic processes that have been studied uh, in cancer, in vitro, uh, in animals not so much in humans, but they give you some of the ideas of the mechanisms involved. And there are, there are many mechanisms. One of, the, one of the mechanisms is what you said. But if the body's immune system is invigorated, then the body's immune system actually helps to, to, to do something with the cancer. I found over the years that when you stop magnetic therapy in somebody who's uh, doing it for cancer therapy, then the magnetic therapy, the cancer will re regrow. There was magnetic fields helped to put a break on the cancer, help the body to control it and turn it into a chronic uh, condition as opposed to an, an aggressive, progressive condition. But once you stop that stimulation, the body still hasn't been able to completely eradicate the cancer. And then magnetic field therapy uh, was helping the body do that. So magnetic field therapy can also make uh, chemotherapy and radiation therapy work better. In fact, there, there's research to indicate that magnetic fields can double the, sometimes double the benefit of chemotherapy while at the same time reducing the side effects from the chemotherapy. So, so how would you then uh, combine that together? I mean, what would be the most effective way to do it prior to the therapy, do it right after chemotherapy, or, or how, or, or does it matter? Well, uh, I would say concurrent, before, during, and after. So if you do it if you do it before chemotherapy, magnetic one of the things magnetic fields do is they increase heat shock proteins or heat stress proteins. So they actually make the cells more hardy to be able to resist the uh, the damage being caused by the cancer process itself. So if you do that, you stimulate the cells to be invigorated and healthier, then you subject them to the chemotherapy or to the radiation, then they're going to be able to be healthier to withstand the chemo and the radiation. But when you're doing it while you're doing the chemotherapy, you're decreasing the side effects from the chemo and making the chemo more active. And then if you do it after the chemotherapy, you're again, you're maintaining the general vitality and health of the, of the cells. When I mentioned that you have 2,000 biochemical processes per cell per second, that means the body's never sleeping. So you can't just sort of do one dose, right, and, and be done with. You, you have to be constantly stimulating the body. So you're probably going to need to treat two to three times a day as, you know, throughout the whole process, before, during, and after. So, and, and, and also, I mean, one of the issues with uh, both chemo radiation is obviously to be able to, uh, the, the need oxygen in, in the tissue, in the cancer tissue, in order to be able to oxidize that, that oxygen. A lot of times it fails because uh, uh, when the cancer, where there's not enough circulation to the core, so to say, of, of, the, uh, uh, of the cancer, of the tumor, uh, then the chemo and the radiation is not as effective. So this becomes then a tool almost to increase and the deliver of that oxygen to increase the effectiveness. It does that. And so magnetic fields, by increasing the oxygen, also create oxidative stress for the cancer. And that's one of the, I think, one of the important things that magnetic fields do is they increase oxidative stress. And, um, you know, it's one of the reasons that a lot of doctors, conventional medicine, doesn't like you to do antioxidant therapies for people who do radiation and chemo because they think most of the benefits or most of the actions of radiation and chemo are, are basically to create oxidative stress. Yeah, exactly. So uh, kind of shifting a little bit because uh, I'd, I'd like you to address also the, the impact then of more of the kind of unnatural uh, electromagnetic fields that we're dealing with. I mean, how does that differ from the different devices that, that you, you promote? Um, so again, with the environmental magnetic fields, the EMFs, whether it's Wi-Fi, 5G, 4G, whatever, those are extremely short wavelengths. And because they're extremely short broadcasted wavelengths, what they're doing is they're being absorbed by the tissues. And because they're absorbed by the tissues, there's heating going on and DNA damage. So um, the magnetic field therapy basically helps to make the body healthier. It does not reverse the DNA damage. It does not reverse the actual resonance effects of those microwaves. It simply makes the body healthier to be able to recover faster from whatever effects there are. 
Now, if you have a, a hold a cell phone to your head, your ear is going to light up. It's going to become very red. If you look at the opposite ear on the opposite side of the head, it's not as red as the ear right next to the to the microwaves produced by the cell phone. So magnetic field therapy, if, if you do magnetic field therapy right after you do cell phone to your ear, you'll help to restore the health of those tissues much faster. Right? All so it basically is doing is rebalancing and making the body healthier. So for people that are then, you know, you have this group of people that are electrosensitive or you have them, then children that, you know, when, when there are in a environment with a lot of uh, e- EMF that they are impacted by and, and that kind of makes them not being able to focus as much. They are, you know, they may develop uh, irritability, some aggressive behavior or, you know, ADD, ADHD or whatever it may be. So bringing something like this in will then help to rebalance the body's uh, effect or impact by this kind of uh, electrosmog that they use, they, they like to call. So the electrosmog is basically creating a hyperexcitability of the nervous system. And that means that since the nervous system is hyperexcitable, then any kind of stimulus, including touching the skin on the back of the, the arm, produces a lot of noise into the body, information into the body that the body has to process. And when the nerves are hyper-excitable, any amount of stimulation then just overwhelms that nervous system, peripheral and central. And that's where the hypersensitivity comes from. So magnetic field therapy then, the idea is to decrease that inflammation, going back to inflammation, to decrease that inflammation and augment the natural functions of the, of the cells in the body. But you have to do it gradually. You can't just all of a sudden blast somebody with magnetic fields. You have to do something that, that I call going low and slow. I'm sorry, I have to make a correction. Uh, my website is drpollock.com, but it's, there's no dot after the dr. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, for whatever reason. Okay, so it's d no. drpollock.com. Not yes, without a without a period after the doctor. So okay, there's stuff you. like this information like that about that on the website, and there is um, information in the book about going low and slow. I've got a new book coming out called Supercharge Your Health with PMF Therapy, which is a lot more practical about how to apply and find and apply magnetic field therapy. And there's a whole protocol, there's a whole chapter, a whole uh, appendix on going low and slow with magnetic fields. So we don't know how a body's going to react to the magnetic field because the body has to make the changes we're, the magnetic field doesn't make the changes. The body makes the changes in response to the stimulus of the magnetic field. So you have to respect the body and say, I'm not sure how the body's going to react. Let's go low and slow. Like athletic training. You don't get off the couch and run a marathon, right? You have to train. So magnetic field therapy, in a sense, is training the cells then to be able to take more and more and more stimulation to get basically normally balanced. So hyperexcitability often requires you to go very low and very slow until the tissues have been repaired and the inflammation has been decreased. So are there any concerns then with, with using a, a PEMF therapy? I mean, is, is there any dangers that people should be aware of? Well, the only, the only true sort of risks with magnetic field therapy uh, primarily come from things like elect- implant electronics, like pacemakers. And also, I don't recommend magnetic field therapy in somebody who had an organ transplant because the people with organ transplants are under immunosuppression. And we can't completely control and predict how the magnetic fields are going to affect the immune system in somebody who's on immunosuppression. Other than that, magnetic field therapy tends to not cause problems. It reveals problems. So because you're stimulating the body to do more work, it may not be able to do it as faster. So if, if, uh, an example might be if you're thirsty, if you become dehydrated, you shouldn't drink a gallon of water right away. Right? You should gradually rehydrate yourself. The magnetic therapy is like that too, so that you can't, shouldn't overwhelm the body. You should gradually um, increase the amount of stimulation, the, increase the intensity gradually, and, and increase the amount of time that you're spending with magnetic field therapy so you can, the body can handle it and the body can properly respond. But other than that, there's no real risk because, again, the magnetic field does not stay in the body. It passes all the way through. So why, why is this not used more widely if it, if it has such a wide uh, usage and it, it impacts the body in such a natural, powerful way? You know, why, why don't people know more about it? 
I, I think that's a very important question, and a lot of it has to do with you. You're probably going to say you could say this yourself. What's the primary reason? Money. There's no money in magnetic field therapy. You know how do you how do you turn a, a two dollar hammer into a two hundred dollar hammer? You get government approval. <laughs> And, and and you you make it so that it can only be used once <laughs> each time. And you can only use it. You can only use it for a certain thing. There's only one indication you can use it for. So you have a technology that has this vast array of functions and and, and uh, aspects of how it works in the body. So the, the devices I mentioned before that were used to approve that were approved for non-union fractures. That company tried to get another indication for osteoporosis. And they went to the FDA, and the FDA said, you have to go back and start over and do animal studies right from the beginning, right from ground zero. Even though the technology has been in use now for 25 years, you still had to go back to animal studies. It was going to cost the company probably close to a half a billion dollars to get that new indication. So they said, no, yeah. can't do that. Yeah, it's insane. It's, it's, it's such a um, – I, 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 yeah, corrupt in one way, but it's 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 – such a bad system because it, it's not based upon the health and the benefit of the individual. It is based upon exactly what, what you're saying. It, it's money, and they are creating these hurdles, you know, these financial hurdles for companies that are coming up with great devices, and, and people are noting, noticing amazing effects. And the same with, with supplements, and you know, they're creating these hurdles that's impossible to get over. I mean, which company has half a billion dollars? You know, to invest in that, you know, it, uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And most of the people who develop magnetic therapy devices are, like you said, are people who are motivated and interested in helping people generally. And they're mom-and-pop shops. They're small, small developers. They're small uh, you know, therapy devices like practices, for medical practice, for example. So you get this idea. You use this stuff, and you find, like I did myself, you find it has this amazing application. But then how do you get it approved? You have to go through all these uh, hoops and come up with all this money. So I, I don't know if people are aware. If a drug company wants to have a, uh, the FDA approve that, a new drug for a new indication, they have to put down close to a half a million dollars on the table, a check, uh, right, that the FDA yeah. has, to, has to clear before they even look at the application. And that's not, you can't get it back once you put the check down on the table. Yeah, exactly. It, it's just a contribution to, to FDA <laughs> for, for the grace to, to look at your project. <laughs> just to look at uh, your project. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dr. Pollack, it's, it's, it's been such an honor to have you on the show. And, and it, it is this technology is, is such a fascinating technology, and it's so user-friendly, and it has such wide range of uh, uh, implications and, uh, and benefits. So, I really urge everyone to get get your book. I mean, I, I have it right in front of me right now. It's, a, it's filled with a tremendous information uh, called Power Tools for Health. And you can also get more information at drpavluk, that's P-A-W-L-U-K dot com. Thank you so much, Dr. Pavluk. I really appreciate this. I thank you as well, Dr. Crawford. And enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend and be safe and be well. Thank you so much, you as well. That is it for today. You're listening to HealthMade Radio. Remember, check us out at healthmade.co. Health is what you make it. 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 Health is what you make it.